Hello, today we are going to talk about how to install KDE Neon in a Vert KVM QMU virtual machine. And then we're uh, going to install an RDP server, XORG XRDP, and connect to that machine using an RDP client. So first of all, what is KDE Neon? Okay. So let's go with a Wikipedia article first. So it's a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu LTS. Plus uh, the result of compiling a large number of uh, Git repositories from the KDE community. So latest versions of the Plasma 5 desktop environment, the KDE frameworks, Qt5 toolkit and other compatible KDE software. Jonathan Rittel. Okay. So it's uh, it has uh, various uh, editions. There's a user edition. It uh, doesn't use the um, installer from uh, Kubuntu Ubiquity, it uses Calama Calamares. Okay, so let's look at the web page, Ctrl Shift T. So the official web page is neon.kd.org. This is a wiki page. This is the source code uh, git repos group on the invent.kd.org slash neon. Okay. Introducing KDE Neon, the latest and greatest of KDE community software packaged on a rock solid base. Okay, let's download now. And we have more possible editions, which is four editions. So we have user edition, testing edition, unstable edition, and developer edition. So user edition is for uh, end users. Testing is from non master branches, I'm guessing. <laughs> Unstable edition is from the master branch. And the developer edition is the same thing as the unstable edition plus um, development library, so dev, uh, dev packages. Okay, what should we use? Which version should we take? Let's 
let's go with user edition and see if this works then maybe the other two are also a possibility so kd neon save neon user 22 august 11th so today Okay, let's prepare a virtual machine. What can we remove from here? Okay, how much space do we have free? So we have 1.3 uh, gigab terabytes free. Okay, so we go new virtual machine from a local ISO. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, so it finished the downloading. Now we say browse from neon user, this guy. Choose volume. Automatically detect did not work. Let's go for Ubuntu or something. Forward. Let's give it as much memory as possible. That's 10 gigabytes of RAM. CPUs, let's give it as much as possible, that's 15. Forward, disk image, let's go with 250 gigabytes. Forward, what's the name of the machine? Neon. Customize configuration before install, yes. Network selection, virtual network default, yes, finish. Okay, so the best uh, motherboard. BIOS is really good. CPUs not okay. So I want one socket and 15 cores, memory OK, put options, hard disk vertio, great, CD-ROM SATA, 2 gigabytes, uh, network interface card vertio, tablet, to Excel looks okay. So begin installation. So it checked the media, which is the ISO. It booted from the ISO mounted as a CD-ROM SATA type. Now we're in a live um, CD system. This is um, KD Plasma desktop environment for 
laptops, desktop computers. We're not going to stay too much in the live CD. We want to install the system. I double clicked. Sometimes double click starts the process, sometimes it starts two processes. So let's see if just one started. Seems to be okay. American English, New York, English US, BIOS, Word, Erase Disk, 10 gigabytes swap, humongous size of swap. Okay, no encrypt, MBR, what MBR? Okay, MBR. So we don't know if the partition table is UFI or uh, G GPT or uh, BIOS MBR. Does it say somewhere? I don't see where. Okay, next. My name. Administrator. This thing is neon. Okay, I need a password, a weak one. Login automatically, no. Looks okay. So a, this is the first user that's created, the one with uh, sudo administrative powers. Okay, so the hardware machine is Kubuntu 22.04. It has um, PCIe 3. NVMe. So it's unpacked fifty percent. We are sorry, Calamar is closed unexpectedly. The reporting assistant is disabled. Close. Okay, now what can we do to force Calamares to actually install? years ago. Using custom partitioning. No, I'm not doing any custom partitioning. Okay, let's let's get another ISO. Let's go with this one with uh, div Debian packages already installed. Okay. So what was this?
Calamaris is already running, shutting down. So this type of report existed previously. What does it say? Okay. Once Calamaris has crashed once, it remains active in the background and requires a kill minus nine. Okay. Where is Calamaris? So at least we'll have better debugging this time. So we go next, next, next. Replace. Select a partition to install on. Yes, Calamar is not the best installer ever, as in the possibly worse. Select a partition to install on. How do I do that? Select a partition to shrink. Where is the select button? Manual partitioning. At least now I have an X button. This guy, PDA2. So I can install in the swap uh, partition. So it says uh, VDA1, EXT4, which is slash. And VDA2, which is swap. MBR. Okay, let's see where it is time. A GPT table is the best option. You know, what are you telling me? Administrator Neon simple password install. 
let's see the std out output. Meanwhile, it finished downloading the ISO with um, KD software built from the master branch. Okay, so now it uh, finished ins installing. I did not see the progress where it extracted uh, files from the ISO. So I want to stop using the ISO. Press enter. Let's see that the ISO was removed. Yeah, it was from the SATA CD ROM. The settings are the same, so network interface card vert IO, disk vert IO, USB graphics tablet, video QXL. 15 cores, CPU, and 10 gigabytes of RAM, and BIOS. Okay, so let's uh, connect and see if we manage to install XORG XRDP. Okay, so let's uh, do a bit of terraforming and pin things that I don't use. Okay, let's pin the terminal as favorite. So it appears in the start menu, console, um, sudo works, let's update everything. All packages are up to date. Okay, we can go to so focal is focal fossa Ubuntu twenty zero four, so two years ago, LTS. Okay, so apt install, minimal things, uh, 
next minus no x mc is essential Okay, and um, SSH. And that's pretty much it. So, XRDP, let's see if they are up to date. So XORG XRDP is version zero dot two dot eighteen. So it's six micro versions behind. Okay, and XRDP. Is at version 0 0.9.19. So this is seven micro versions behind. Okay. What else do we need to do? We probably need to do this thing. So let's see. So copy paste. Does work. Great. Okay. Let's connect to this thing. So first of all, SSH. My first time, yes. Password. And I'm in. Control D to log out. And now um, we're going to use free RDP, the RDP client to connect to it. So so free RDP is installed. on my hardware machine. It's called FreeRDP Nightly. And it's installed in slash opt. So slash opt FreeRDP Nightly bin. There's two possibilities. There's WL FreeRDP, the client for um, Wayland and x3rdp, which is the client for the x server. So we're going with x3rdp. And we'll look at the help. Let's prepare a command line. Okay, 
So we want width. We want a width of um, So 1080p is my current resolution on the hardware machine. So I want a bit smaller resolution to keep the KD taskbar visible. So we're going with um, something smaller than 1080p. Let's start with 1080p and then we'll make the window of 3RDP smaller. H1080. Okay, well, targeted good is in here. So, an example first. So, it says uh, U slash U colon administrator slash V is the server. So, it's this thing. The IP address, height width, and then uh, we want sound, not also but pulse. We want slash video. In order to use H264 for um, encoding uh, video. What else we want? So we did sound. Smart sizing, I don't know what this thing is. RFX. Remote effects, okay. I don't know what this thing does. No proxy needed, no port, no password, network is in fact the speed, so we want the best speed possible, which is LAN. No multi-touch, no smart card, no microphone. No keyboard things, no IPv6. Sometimes we could use home drive, but not, not now. This uh, makes the home drive available, my tilde available both in the hardware machine and in the virtual machine. Minus fast path, no. Drives, all mount points as shares. Clipboard is enabled by default. BPP, yes. So bits per pixel, the maximum which is 32. Automatically does auto reconnect. We don't just launch one application. So this should be it. Let's see if it works. Control C. Paste. Boom. It requests my password for the user administrator starts.
let's configure some minimal things in here. So edge, don't do anything. Outer 15%. What else? Mouse. Bigger cursors. And the screen locking time after 30 minutes. Apply. Okay, let's disconnect this thing. Log out. It shows on the RDP screen. Okay, so this is it. It seems that uh, we can connect uh, via using the RDP protocol directly. No, no configurations were required, not even the allowed users anybody in xwrapper.config. Okay, network connections. Okay, and as we see, the RDP window has a title bar which makes part of the KD taskbar not visible. So we need to make the window not this tall, a bit shorter and a bit narrower because right now it sits under the KD taskbar from the host machine, so from the hardware machine. So let's make the width and the height both smaller. So this could be 1040 and this 88. Okay. So the width is good enough. The height is 10 pixels shorter, but it looks okay. So what do we have right now? We have a virtual machine, which is this one, Neon, running uh, KD Neon User Edition. We're not using Word Manager to interact with the machine we're using the RDP protocol, which is a protocol from Microsoft. Remote desktop protocol. Okay, so now let's uh, prepare this machine, KD Neon, for developing with uh, KDSRC minus build in order to build Git repos from the KD community, okay? Okay, so that would be KD, yeah, I think, involve uh, development. Okay. So it says one time set up your development environment. Basic tools for KD Neon. We need Git, CMake and dialog copy. We have the console pinned in the as favorite in the start menu. The start menu is called 
application launcher. So let's start console. This is a bug where console starts with a minimal minimum possible size. Okay, let's um, I will snap it to the left. So let's make the console window use half of the, the left half of the screen. And now we need to have a web browser inside of uh, the virtual machine. So let's copy this thing and close the web browser that's on my hardware machine. So this is a classical bug in um, FreeRDP where copying, so if you copy something that is copied uh, via the RDP protocol to the virtual machine and that crashes X FreeRDP, the RDP client. So no problem, let's connect again. Since we're using RDP, when we disconnect, we don't lose anything. So we need to start a incognito Firefox. Let's configure it. So no pocket, no head, no empty spaces. Never show any toolbars. Okay, settings, download. Always ask and blank page for every new tab or new window. Okay, so KD getting involved development. Okay. So it says on KD Neon, do these things. Okay, let's hide the toolbar in console. Okay. So it installs CMake Ninja dialog, which is similar to key dialog for uh, showing message boxes from the console, from the terminal. Git, let's install some more things. Git GUI. How can we stop the, where are you? Not the super user. Okay, so we have git GUI works and git k works. Okay, then it says um, configure git. My name. User email. Okay. Set up KDSRC build. So this is the Git repository. We we'll need to Git clone it. Okay, then we run initial setup. So it uh, sudoed, so it required my password, but then the password was cached because 
I ran uh, sudo recently and then it tries to install as many dev packages as possible from from dev packages so from a distribution it tries to install development uh, packages because KD git repos depend on hundreds of dev dev packages so these are for non KD things and for uh, cute things so we get non KD non cute things from dev packages and we also get the cute things from dev packages what we're not getting from the packages is KD things, those we're getting them from KDSRC minus build. So anything that's a KD git repo, we build it using KDSRC build. And we're ignoring the KD things which are installed using devs. Okay, so it says it created a configuration file in tilde slash dot config slash kdsrc build rc so this is the rc file and then it's going to update my bash rc yes so let's see what it did so you create bash rc no kate yet so we need kate and We'll also need Qt Creator. Which is the ID from the Qt project. Okay, so kdsrc minus build is a git repo. We've git cloned it. And this is similar to a uh, ports collection in uh, FreeBSD or packagesrc in NetBSD or portage in Cento, etc. Okay, so we've installed Qt Creator. Now we need to look at the configuration file for kdsrc minus build. So that's kate Okay. This guy. So this includes uh, dependencies true kd directory to the last slash kd slash usr so this is the make install directory source directory this is the git clone directory build directory this is a cmake directory uh, we use qt from the packages from the distribution this should be debug always num course maximum which is 15 low course 12 Stop on failure false directory layout in event directory layout. This doesn't do anything, this includes everything. Control S looks good. Okay, Control Shift T echo dollar sign path environment variable so it has put the 
git work directory of the git repo kdsrc minus build so the directory where we git clone kdsrc minus build in front of the path okay so that's the equivalent of doing source tilde slash dot bash rc okay this thing and then we don't do cute let's do disable antivirus there's no such thing and indexing okay this will disable file searching great delete index data great Okay, so we will still need to install some dev packages, especially dev dev packages. And now we can start building software with KDSRC build. KDSRC build Dolphin. So KDSRC build. Let's go with build everything on. Um, Debug. So it uh, git cloned the git repo for uh, the git repo metadata, so the list of uh, git repositories that are part of the KD community and the dependencies between them. And now it has started building the most uh, elementary um, Git repositories from the KD community. So the first is ECM, which is um, extra CMake modules, and then the KD frameworks, that's around 70 modules for each module. So it first it computes the order of dependencies, so it's a three of dependencies this module depends on this other module the builds the modules in the correct order such that they build so we start with the leaves first and then it gets to the root and um, for each module it does three steps the first is similar to what in K in GNU automake would be dot slash configure which is the CMake step. Then there's uh, make, and then there's make install. So we use make files, CMake generates CMake, uh, make files. Okay, now we're in the build step. The make install step is really fast. It builds with uh, 15 cores. So that's make minus J15. KF5 means KD Frameworks 5. So this is KF5 widgets add-ons. KF5 window system. There's uh, many build warnings because there's many Git repositories. So there's more than 70 just KD frameworks and then there's 300 application Git uh, repositories. So in 400 modules there's 
tens of thousands of build warnings. And the simple way of doing uh, git uh, merge requests for git uh, repositories of from the KDE community is actually to just build each module starting with the least uh, known git repos and least worked on git repos and least maintained git repos and to fix some uh, build warnings. There's plenty of build warnings to choose from. Unused parameter. This way you can improve your C++ skills and do a large number of uh, merge requests. And uh, the spirit is to have just one git commit to fix just one thing and to create just one merge request out of that. So one merge request should contain as much as possible just one git uh, commit and that git commit should contain just one change. Otherwise, if you have multiple different changes in the same git commit, then uh, you will be asked to break down the, that git commit with uh, to split the unrelated commits into different uh, git commits and there's a ton of headache with if one uh, change is not approved in the merge request and the others are for instance you need to break the merge request into two in one the things that the code changes that were approved and another one with the code changes that were not approved in order to land some, at least one merge request. So that's why it's better if merge requests are as small as possible. We did uh, KD Frameworks 5 Attica. This is the make install step for the breeze dark theme. K5 global Excel, another KD framework. Here, five XML GUI. Here, five solid. This is the hardware abstracts, a bit of a hardware abstraction layer. Okay, this is KF5 bookmarks, a bookmark framework used in several KD applications, KF5 job widgets. KIO to 
the input output KD framework. Okay, so the next step is to make sure that uh, um, KDSRC build uh, works correctly. So for that, we're going to build a, uh, an application, so not a KD framework, one of the simpler ones, such as KCalc, which is the KD calculator, and then run that thing from the command line and uh, in Qt uh, develop in the ID with a debugger and everything. Okay, so kcalc finished building. So the command line was kdsrc minus build kcalc. 76 uh, Git repos were cloned and built. Mm, unfortunately, KDSRC minus build doesn't know the exact uh, dependencies between uh, Git repos. So it tends to build more Git repos that are not really necessary. So in this case, KCalc does not have any dependency on KWallet has an optional dependency on it, on key activities, on plasma framework, on key activity stats, on key runner. So even if some uh, git repositories do not build correctly, you still might be successful in building what you want, what you really want it to build, which is in my case kcalc, the KD calculator. Okay, so the two objectives that remain for us once kcalc was built correctly is one, we want to run it. So for that we use a thing like this. So we need to look at the prefix file and then source it and then run the binary executable. So for that I'm going to copy slash kde slash build. This is the CMake build directory. Then kcalc is a utility. Yes. With six, I'm going to copy it into tilde slash kde. Then I'm going to edit it. Kd prefix. I'm going to uncommand export ld library path line. Control S, let's look at the file. So it says that the make install directory is tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin and this is prepended to the path. And then the same we need to prepend to ld library path, xdg data directories, xdg config directories, Qt plugin path, qml import path, Qt quick controls style path. So everything has prepended values from tilde slash kd slash usr. Okay, now we're going to source it tilde slash kd prefix and now we can start kcalc which looks like this. Let's make sure it's the correct kcalc. So we go ls list open files and then grab kcalc. Okay, so it takes cute things from uh, the packages from the kdnion distribution non cute non kd things from the packages from kd neon distribution but then uh, kd things 
from tilde slash kd slash usr such as kd frameworks 5 library core additions config core global Excel, icon themes item views etc okay and the executable the actual executable kcalc is from the correct directory which is tilde slash kd slash usr slash bin slash kcalc okay so the correct kcalc was uh, loaded started the process with the correct uh, so files loaded inside of the process okay we can confirm that by looking at help and uh, kcalc and then components it says Qt version 5.15.5 so this is the version from KD Union and KD Frameworks 5.95 which is from uh, KDSRC okay so again all KD things come from KDSRC so from the tilde directory slash KD and all of the Qt and non Qt non KD things from the the packages from KD Union Okay, so the kcalc has built correctly. We can run kcalc correctly now. We need to debug kcalc correctly. Okay, and uh, we start uh, Qt Creator. We can start it from the start menu. Like this, or from the command line. Okay, it says, would you like to take a quick tour? Not now. Let's see what version of Qt Creator this is. So it's version 4. So it's four major versions behind. Now the newest version is 8.1. Okay. Let's see how good this thing is. So, I need uh, let's open the Kcalc uh, project and see. So, file open, file or project, kd, where are you? File open, file or project. KD SRC. So I single click enabled. Okay, so it's in um, the source uh, directory is in tilde slash kd slash src utilities kcalc and in here we need to select the cmake list file okay then we go manage kits there should be only one kit in here which is the desktop default one which contains uh, include files and source code files and gdb and gcc and etc executables from the distribution so from the packages from KD Neon. otherwise what's extra in here should be removed so nothing to remove okay then we go import existing build and it's kind of the same directory but we replace src with build okay so it will create a new build configuration which is called debug2 and it will select as a, a CMake target to be run kcalc so there's k number test or kcalc so kcalc is okay this is the GUI application so everything seems to be okay now let's put a breakpoint at the start of kcalc in the main function so kcalc we can navigate by projects in the edit view or by file system so let's go with projects kcalc source files kcalc cpp double click on it 
select the symbol last symbol which is main put a breakpoint by clicking on the gutter and then we can look again so it's uh, kick out the project uh, not the desktop kit which is the default one we're using special settings because we want the include files to be for kd things from tilde slash kd slash usr slash include not from slash uh, usr slash include and other things like that okay so debug to kcalc executable to be run let's go straight with the debug button so this thing start debugging of start a project click on it okay it says stopped at breakpoint one in thread one um, the threads are just one key calc we're using gdb and we're on uh, breakpoint number one so let's go so this is a cute thing we only have h files not cpp files for this so if you go debug step into it didn't find anything but for k localized string which because it's a kd thing we have both include files or h files but also we have cpp files so source code files so let's go inside of here step into f11 so inside of a cpp file that's totally outside of the currently loaded project so the currently loaded project is kcalc which is tilde slash kd slash src slash utilc slash kcalc and the debugger has gone into a totally different directory which is tilde slash kd slash src frameworks k internationalization src internationalization k localized string cpp and we have uh, visualizers for uh, uh, Qstrings, for const chars, pointers. So it's kcalc, the domain for internationalization. We can go F11. We're inside QGlobal static, so inside of an H file, a header file, an include file from Qt. We don't have CPP files for, for this. Okay, it didn't go to static KLSLP, which where is which is a define. Okay, F11 inside of Qt again. We don't have CPV files. We only can step into H files, but we can step really deep inside H files from Qt. Okay, so this is a constant pointer with a value kcalc. This thing, I'm guessing it's a qstring. qbyte array. Okay, so f11. stepped in a strange place F10. so this is a cute thing we don't have the source code so f10 this is a kd thing we have the source code so f11 f11 f10 f11 so inside the constructor of kd libs for config migrator which is from uh, the KD framework kcore add-ons so it's a KD thing we have built it uh, using cmake build configuration debug so it uh, knows where the cpp files are so the debugger will step into the correct cpp file even the if the cpp file is from another git repo which is part of the KD community but is not part of this git repo which is kcalc very 
important for me to have the debugger stepping into into the correct places such that I can see the source code because I don't know KD nor Qt. And this way I learn the source code of KD and Qt uh, projects. So F11. The app name is kcalc, is a qstring const reference. This will call the constructor of the private. F11, we're inside of the constructor of the private. So some KD classes have a uh, private class, which corresponds to that class. Okay, F11, F11, we're inside of Q string list because what's up name? I go control click, it says a, it's a Q string, and this thing is a Q string, so I don't know why it needs Q string list. F11. Q list, Q string list. Okay. And then we have the source code of the set config files method. Control click on it to navigate. We can put a breakpoint F10. So we're inside uh, when we're with the debugger on the opening brace the values of the parameters cannot be inspected yet but on the when we go step next f10 the values of the parameters of the method will be populated such as in this case it's a const qstring list reference with just one qstring which is kcalc rc rc meaning resource is not a configuration file or configuration file, okay, configuration file. Okay. So this is it. We can edit the source code in a good ID, which is Qt Creator. We can debug, step into, step over. We can put breakpoints. We can see source code of H and CPP files. It navigates to the correct place. It doesn't jump all over the place because we have built with CMake build configuration debug. Migrate the big method. We can go debug continue, so F5. Nothing to migrate, so return early. So ifs should be should have a new line before, right? An empty, an empty line before, so or after this, if there's no trailing new line, this is a KD framework named Kcore Adons. which for um, KD5 projects, if it's the first time that pro that executable starts, if it already defines uh, configuration files for the version 4 of that program, it will upgrade the configuration files from KD version 4 to KD version 5. Okay, so by going with a debugger, you can find a ton of things that can be improved. You can find, for instance, mixed spaces and uh, and tabs. You can fix those.
so then you you have tools you can go silang tidy and crazy and fix whatever warnings silang tidy or crazy finds or you could uh, enable the cpp plugin cpp check plugin so at uh, code analyzer cpp check experimental restart required and then you can uh, run cpp check on the source code of this git repo well interesting ui issues CPP check. So there's many ways to contribute small merge requests uh, to Git repositories from the Qt, uh, from the KD community by fixing things such as um, a line that contains both tabs and spaces when the indentation should just use spaces by fixing um, warnings from cpp check from c lazy from c length id by fixing just plain uh, build uh, warnings or by not building with GCC, but building with um, CLang and fixing those build warnings. So again, there's 400 Git repositories, plenty of such build warnings available. And uh, pretty easy to start contributing and doing your very simple merge requests. So that was about how to install KD Neon, the distribution from KD in a virtual machine, how to connect to it using FreeRDP, and then how to set up KDSRC build and build an executable, which is kcalc, run the executable correctly, and then edit and debug the source code of the Git repository kcalc using a good ID, which is Qt Creator. Thank you.